A United Nations delegation arrived in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia today. The organization fled the city in the mid-1990s as the country collapsed. Somalia became the classic failed state ruled by competing warlords. But within the past few weeks, a single authority has been formed for the capital, Mogadishu. The relative tranquility has been brought by an Islamic militia and is enforced through Sharia courts. Washington's alarmed. So our Somali is about to follow the example of Afghans under the Taliban. With a rare report on life inside the country, here's Grant Ferret. In this completely Muslim country, education for many children means learning by heart passages from the Quran. It's been this way for generations. These children have been raised in a country with no government to provide schools. Now, after 15 years of anarchy and civil war, a semblance of order is returning to Mogadishu. The authority which is reunifying the city brings Islam out of the schools and mosques and into politics and government. I'm very happy that the Islamic court leaders have taken over Mogadishu to build a state based on Sharia law. In the tangled chaos, a form of normality is being restored. Mogadishu residents are getting on with life with greater security than they've known for years. The warlords and their militia who've devastated Somalia since the collapse of the government in 1991 have, for the moment at least, been forced out of the capital. They've left a country deserted by the outside world. The new calm in Mogadishu comes courtesy of the Islamic courts. The local media are on hand to report the opening of this new court in the north of the city. In the absence of a judiciary or a police force, this is an important symbol of law and order. It's here with the clerics that power now lies in Mogadishu. The difference between the warlords and us is that they did not have public support. They ruled by force and brought no development. We will strengthen the peace, bring back justice, and we will not oppress the people. For all the talk of peace, the new authority came to power through force. Guns still rule, but with different fingers on the trigger. The Islamic courts have built up a militia of thousands of local fighters, many of them just teenagers. The 200 people who live in this camp have all been made homeless during the years of fighting. Like most others in Somalia, they have no mains electricity or water, and no schools. If the courts are to maintain popular support, they'll need to improve the lives of people like these. We, we, we go this year, refugee camp. Said Ahmed was a refugee in Sweden for several years before recently returning to Somalia. He's become a spokesman in the camp. It hasn't been a happy homecoming. A house destroyed by missiles. We live here for at least two months. Uh, a house burned up, destroyed. We live here 13 people. We have five, six beds in here. I can show you if you like. Warlords are murderers. They are the murderers, the killers. They have no human society for people. They don't care for nobody. They just want to do things the, their way. They believe in the, they believe in the AK-47. That's the god of the warlords. The wounded are brought to one of Somalia's few functioning hospitals. Those are, uh, all these are fractured. Medina Hospital now seems relatively empty. Uh, most of them are gunshots. This guy was gunshot. This is bomb explosion. This are gunshots from Baidawa. Those are, both of them are gunshots. This teenager was shot in the chest 12 days ago. He's traveled across the country to be treated. Things may look bad now, but that's nothing compared with the days of the warlords. These days are quiet. When the fight, last fighting was happening, 
no, n there's no uh, big fighting or there's no fighting. I can say there's no fighting in Mogadishu nowadays, and uh, the region is uh, maybe, but uh, in Mogadishu we couldn't see any any new admissions for gunshots. So these days are quite quite real. There is uh, still uh, guns in the hands of the people. And this is where they buy the guns. In Bakara Market, you can find anything from narcotics to Kalashnikovs and passports. <laughs> US dollars are the favoured currency. With no central bank to control the printing of notes, the local shillings are of little value. And traders here are happy with the improved security brought by the Islamic courts. The way the warlords did things and the Islamic courts is completely different. With the warlords, their militia used to rape, rob, kidnap and kill people. They also killed people at the roadblocks if they did not pay what was demanded and they denied the country a government and any development. <laughs>